Welcome back to the channel. Well, I hesitated doing this video uh, for a couple reasons. One, I'm not very proud of this. And two, um, I wasn't sure how to give advice on uh, a vehicle-specific application such as mine uh, here in the Mustang. But I have to go, th go over this with you. If you're running a classic car, classic truck, and you uh, obtained one that didn't have the best wiring to begin with, uh, and then you, in my, like in my situation, needed to add aftermarket gauges, etc., to make it safe. Uh, you probably run into the situation where you needed to change all the gauges. And now normally, like, a set of these gauges would be hanging down underneath someone's dash in, like, a, a, a three-pack situation where the, the Mach 1 actually has the uh, gauge pod integrated in. And I did this already on these gauges that I'm about to show you, but I wanted to show you this disaster of a mess. This is just the absolute wrong way to do everything, and I want to show. I want to use my trials and tribulations as an example here. Now, for example, this mess uh, is one of the problems, and a lot of the problem here is these exposed ends. Now, all, all these ends that you see here are for the lights that are on each one of these gauges that I'm about to show you. Each gauge, RPM, fuel, and mile per hour, each has a light in it. The bigger four inch gauges actually have two lights in it, which means there's four connections per gauge. So four, eight, ten. Um, just ten of these connections that are just there to power the lights. That's not even getting into what signal sender uh, circuits each one of these need to operate. So a lot of the rat's nest you see in here is just a mishmash of trying to pull power, pull ground, get stuff from the switch power source. Um, you know, route it back into the gauges in a semi-methodical manner, which isn't very methodical, and it just ends up being a disaster. And when you're trying to troubleshoot things, like I'm trying to troubleshoot my tr my fuel sending unit, uh, it starts to become very frustrating. Like, for example, this gauge was added after the fact. This is a ground that's just spliced in. It's just hanging here. It's, I mean, this is a, it's very messy. So I want to show you what I made so you can, so if you're doing crap like this to just to get stuff done, you can stop and follow my advice. Now this took me about, what I'm about to show you, took me about an hour and a half of just kind of hanging out. It's over here. I made up these wiring kits real quick just to kind of go over some of this DeWalt stuff. I made up these wiring kits. This is my shrink wrap kit up here. And here is the uh, wire ends kit down here. But what I did was here's the gauge set as you see it in the Mustang all the time. And if we turn her over, here's what it looks like now. And it's very, very clean and organized. And a lot of the problems were mitigated now by making essentially a wiring harness to go all the way across the gauges that all come out and feed into one area. Everything's color coded, everything has a purpose, everything is tethered together, so nothing is flapping in the breeze back there. Also, a very important point is where I shrink wrapped all of my connections. You can see this sticks out pretty far. This sticks, I mean, this thing, each one of these lights, these are the lighting pods, these stick out like an inch and a half. So <laughs> you got an inch and a half of just exposed 12 volt uh, connection just hanging in your dash in there that has the potential of arcing and, and grounding out and all these other problems. So what I do is I shrink wrapped all the way down the connection um, everywhere that you see an actual terminal end. Same for here too. And then once these are all joined up with the actual vehicle uh, wires, then they're gonna be shrink wrapped over so there's nothing that can be exposed. And this is really the, the, the better way to do it. You're gonna to have to, if you're using aftermarket gauges, you gotta you got to make yourself an aftermarket wiring harness. It's just essential. So over here we have the tachometer. Uh, each one of the lights, is it's, it's wired together. So each one of the lights, um, you know, green. For this situation, I have a lot of uh, sending unit wires that are yellow or, and, and red, or I'm sorry, red. So I wanted to use yellow for master power. So everywhere you see a yellow wire is positive. It runs through all the lights. It supplies the positive uh, feed for each gauge pod and has one main sprout 
out here that's positive. That'll be connected to the switch 12 volt source, which runs back to the painless wiring fuse block. The black wire you see obviously is ground. So each one of the lamps in the gauges has a ground. Each gauge requires a ground. Everything is ground together. And then we'll find a master chassis ground uh, that has proper uh, resistance. Then the gray wire is my tachometer wire. That's the color of the wire that's coming out of the uh, Holly Sniper. That's gonna that's just run through the harness nice and neat. That will connect to tax signal. Uh, green wire is the fuel sending unit wire. The rest of the wires, which is the white and the red wire, are for the speedometer Hall effect sensor uh, that will be plugged into the VDO Hall effect sensor, and then they share ground as well. So, just wanted to go over that. So if you guys are um, are doing the uh, aftermarket gauge thing and you're creating a rat's nest for yourself, you probably don't even realize you're doing it until you've had years of messing around back there and then have a problem. I would just, I you know, like today I got frustrated, I just ripped everything out. I said I'm just going to do a harness the right way. This way I know that if I ever have to come back here and service anything, I can remove the whole thing without wires getting pulled. Another problem with the way I had it is as soon as you get break this loose and you start pulling, those have to be tightened down. As soon as you start pulling this thing out, then all the connections would start pull loose back there. Then they would hit against each other and then blow fuses. So it's just a it's just a complete disaster. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this kind of buttoned up, remove the rat's nest out of the dash, and then I'll show you uh, what everything looks like nice and tight. All right, that looks a little better, doesn't it? Here's the uh, harness, all going into the master center, all zip tied together correctly. No mess. So now everything will go in and out nice, and I don't have to worry about arcing and sparking and all the other kind of crap back here. So a little more tidying up back here. I'm going to tether all that back together and put the gauges in. Okay, and there's the gauges all nice and installed. No mess anywhere. And best part of all, turn the light off. Everything works nice. No BS. Oh yeah. So now, next thing to do is the new alternator. So remember to subscribe and I'll get you in the next video.